guys is Aaron. I'm just going ahead and throwing together another impromptu video of the setup of our humidity torture test here so we can kind of get you to understand um, how the, uh, everything's working here. Um, I honestly am not 100% sure what the results are going to be on this and uh, I encourage everybody else to, uh, if anybody else wants to, you know, try this experiment themselves or uh, it'll lend some more, shall we say, validity of the results. But um, um, also I just want to, you know, be perfectly clear in the method and exactly what's going on here as a science guy I'm real particular about these things just so everybody can replicate it if they so choose um, uh, some background information about it the uh, uh, situation has been over the past few months I've been just getting enormous numbers of emails uh, based off of how well a uh, how well humidity is able to be absorbed into different types of wood species uh, the one that I'm primarily getting the most of is of course uh, something called a western um, or at least I should say it's, this is just aromatic red cedar um, aromatic cedar is spectacularly beautiful stuff as you can see this is a, a prime example of just some incredible figure and different types of colors and things like that uh, and a lot of people as you know build cigar humidors out of a product like this and uh, the question of course is is it will people use since people use cigar humidors um, will it be able to retrieve or suck away moisture from your uh, from your precious magic cards so of course your foils don't curl that's of course the the big thing because you do not want your precious foils to curl because once they curl they are curled forever and that is of course no good so I did some research on this and I was a little surprised to actually figure out that uh, like humidors like cigar humidors the point of the cedar itself isn't necessarily just to go ahead and you um, you know to suck humidity away from the, the cigars it's actually to keep the humidity higher you need a cigar humidor to actually be at about 70 percent humidity to be effective so i got starting to think i mean if it's supposed to say at 70 percent um is it really going to protect your foils from curling within a box like this i don't know the answer to and that of course is where it brings us to our experimental setup here so I got two box choices. I have, of course, aromatic cedar, which honestly is one of the softest species in the world. It's the most porous species. It is also, if you go ahead and take a look at the, uh, the scale here, it's incredibly, incredibly lightweight. This particular box weighs uh, 3.1 ounces. That is incredibly lightweight and airy. It's not very dense. The other species I went ahead and chose was one that I figured, if anything, would be the most unforgiving wood species around, uh, especially when you're talking about absorbing humidity. This right here is Brazilian cherry, also known as Hatoba. I think that's how you pronounce it. Hatoba is one of the hardest wood species in the world. It is ridiculously hard. If you have a chunk of Hatoba and you throw it in the water, it is so dense, it just sinks. Now, how much does this weigh compared to our cedar box? This weighs, of course, about 6.1 ounces. It is literally twice as heavy as this box, and they are the exact same box. So, our experiment setup kind of goes like this. I found some perfectly flat foils, okay? These are from uh, just some various uh, M14, some Modern Masters foils in here. These, it was so hard to find perfectly flat foils, as you know, I like literally set them on a piece of white paper, made sure they were perfectly flat. I had to go through about 50 foils to pick out my favorite nine foils that are gonna undergo our humidity experiment. So here is basically the set of the experiment. Uh, we're going to go ahead and throw these, some of these cards in sleeves, and some of these cards we're going to leave unsleeved. We are going to put one unsleeved foil in here, one sleeved foil, and one double sleeve foil, obviously in our Brazilian cherry box. We then will go ahead and choose one sleeve foil, one unsleeve foil, and of course one double sleeve foil, and throw it in our cedar box. The other uh, one, our control group, is effectively going to be no box. We're not going to use a box. All we're going to do is set the foils like in a little jar exposed to the natural humidity conditions that they would normally do. We're still going to have, of course, one uh, unsleeved, uh, you know, obviously one sleeved and one double sleeved. Now, how are we going to control the humidity? Well, 
this is what we're going to do and we'll be able to monitor the humidity with our little digital humidity gauges right here um, as you can see it's a fairly humid day in wisconsin uh, which right now i have the windows open and we're at about 69 70 percent humidity in this particular room right now these um, uh, particular humidity gauges have all been calibrated to show us uh, the current humidity conditions so what we're going to end up doing is along with the foils inside each of these box is going to go and place a humidity gauge. The one that does not have a box will monitor and maintain the, or at least be able to monitor the humidity in the room that we place these. The room we're gonna place these, I'm gonna show you in a second here, is going to be my basement. My basement lives at like 75, 80% humidity all the time. And I'm gonna go down there and show you exactly what goes on uh, in a second here. All right, guys, you are now in my basement bathroom. It is ridiculously humid down here. It's about 75, 80% uh, down here right now, but you can see exactly the setup on where they each have their individual cubbies. Uh, we have obviously the cedar box on the left and the Brazilian cherry box in the middle and obviously the exposed cards over on the right. Uh, the cards are gonna stay down here for weak increments uh, and we'll pull them out. We'll be able to see the, hum uh, be able to calculate the humidity level inside each individual box and compare it to the control value. Okay, so what's our hypothesis here? Well, first of all, <clears throat> I think it's pretty clear that since this is going to be like, since these cards are going to be living in 70, 80%, I also, to be honest with you, it'll spike probably once a day to about 98% because there's a shower down there. And uh, as that, uh, you know, that spike goes up, some of these cards are seriously going to get wrecked. Now, the one that we expect, obviously, to do the worst is going to be over here, the reassembling skeleton. Yes, you are perfectly flat right now and are probably going to get annihilated by the end of our trial. Uh, what we're going to end up doing is uh, we're going to throw these down there and in order to have a proper amount of time to uh, allow the wood to acclimate and along with being able just to you know just see how how messed up we can get these things is uh, we're we're going to actually do uh, this is this month this is going to take over the course of a month is how long this uh, particular experiment is going to take. Um, every week, you can expect a small little video from me as I take out the foils from each individual box and you'll be able to see the individual humidities under each box to see if any of the humidity actually was, uh, was absorbed into the boxes themselves. And uh, at that point, you'll be able to know uh, exactly how much uh, a wooden box actually has. Is the cedar going to be better than the Brazilian cherry? Well, you would like to think it does, but is that reality? I don't know. That's what we're going to find out. Will the double sleeved card that's left out in massive amounts of humidity, will that double sleeved card be perfectly flat when it gets out? Because let's face it, these double sleeves are in two layers of plastic, two layers of plastic that are supposed to protect them. I've seen videos from, uh, you know, from Brian at the uh, Tolarian Community College, a good friend of, uh, good friend of uh, my boxes uh, that has submerged these particular cards uh, in water if they can be submerged is that the same thing as being exposed to water vapor over the course of a month again i don't know that's why we of course are going to do the experiment it's gonna be a wild ride and uh we'll be able to see uh what the results are at the end and see which of these foils will curl and which of these foils will not thanks guys Thank you.